Good morning and welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today I have back Barry Bricky. He is the Public Education and Information Officer for the Kingsport Fire Department. We just had you here for Baby Safety Seat Awareness Month. Now you're back because what is October? It's Fire Prevention Month and so we're excited about that. You're excited about Fire Prevention Month because yes, you are with the fire department and you wanna prevent <laughs> fires, <laughs> that's true. Well, let's talk about everything going on for fire prevention. What do we need to know for that for October? Well, the biggest thing this year is to learn the sounds of fire safety. All right. And so the National Fire Protection Association along with the Kingsport Fire Department and fire departments all across the United States are gonna be marking the week of Fire Prevention Week and for October and letting people know that they should know what their smoke alarms sound like. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody might say, well, I know what my smoke alarm sounds like. But a lot of times, you know, um, hearing a small chirp, just an instant chirp, or if you hear a long series of beeps, can be a completely different thing from your smoke alarm. Really? If it's that long series of beeps, then that means that there is smoke in the air and it has detected something, so you need to take action and probably get out of the house really quickly. Really? If it's that little chirp. I hear the chirp. That means my battery needs be, to be changed, right? Absolutely. A lot okay. of people kind of ignore that. And so we need to make sure that when they do hear those sounds, they know what to do. And so if it is that chirp, uh, then you need to check your smoke alarm. You need to make sure that uh, you put a new battery inside of it. Now, if you put a new battery in it and it chirps again, that could be the indication that it is the end of life for that smoke alarm. Yeah. Some smoke alarms do have that and it'll say that in the manual. And so you'll know that you need to replace that. I'm glad you mentioned that <coughs> because you're gonna fuss at me. But mine was doing the chirp chirp. I changed the batteries and it's still making noise. I just took the whole darn thing down. <laughs> Because, you know, I was like, oh, it won't stop, and, and I have forgotten about it. That's not good, Linda. I know, so I need to get a new one. You do, and if you are going to look at getting a new smoke alarm, mm -hmm. there are a bunch of different options. Um, you can get a smoke alarm that just has a standard 9-volt battery. Mm -hmm. There are some smoke alarms that use double A's. Mm -hmm. There are some newer smoke alarms that actually have a sealed 10-year battery in there. Nice. And so you don't have to change the batteries. now. They are a little bit more costly than a regular smoke alarm, but by the time you buy new batteries every single year for 10 years, it definitely is going to be much cheaper in mm -hmm. the long run. And so you can get those, put those up, and then make sure you test them every month. Go by every once in a while, reach up, mash that button, test it. And it's always a good time to test it, maybe when you're sending off your power bill or the water bill or something like that. And that way you know that you have a good working battery in it. Also, if uh, maybe you go on vacation for a week or so, mm -hmm. come back, check those alarms because they could have died while you were gone and you have no idea. Well, where can I get one of these 10 year battery ones? Because you know, I live, you know where I live, in one of those lofts with like 20 foot ceilings. I can't just go by and reach it. I, you know, can barely get it on a ladder. So the 10 year one sounds good for me. Where, where do you get those or what are they called? or? Well, you can go online mm -hmm. and look them up. Uh, Kitta, First Alert, all make them. Uh, there are a number of manufacturers. Make sure oh, they're okay. UL listed uh, because sometimes you can buy some things that may not be well tested here uh, on the internet. And so you need to make sure that you get it from a reputable company. Uh, I would look at Home, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Target, somewhere like that. They mm -hmm. all would carry them. And then you can look at also, when you buy that alarm, there are different types of smoke sensors. There's a photoelectric and there's ionization. Ionization is the older technology. What it does, it actually picks up the difference in the charged particles in the air. And so smoke changes the ion and ions in mm -hmm. the air, positive and negative ions. And so when you have a ionization smoke alarm, that smoke will set it off. Now the photoelectric actually has a light beam inside and when that is uh, interrupted and deflected, it goes onto a sensor and it will tell you there's light wispy smoke. And is, so the difference it, in those okay. is that the ionization picks up a fast burning fire quicker mm -hmm. and the photoelectric picks up a slow smoldering fire mm. quicker. And so you can have both types in your home or you can have one that has a combination ah. and it has both ionization and photoelectric. Now, if you have appliances in your home that have gas, mm -hmm. then you probably need a carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. And that way, if, you are, if the fuel that you're using the, is not burning cleanly, 
then you can have carbon monoxide and it will detect that in the home. Ah, but you said you can get um, the detectors that have both the photo and the ion. Yes, that would be called a dual sensor smoke alarm. Dual sensor smoke alarm, that's the best. Yes. And I want the 10 year battery, so that's what I gotta look for. <laughs> And uh, what, well, question, can you guys mm -hmm. come put those in for people or how does that work or, or not? Now we get that question a lot. Okay. Uh, we have people who say, hey, I've, I have some smoke alarms and I maybe can't reach that. Yeah. Uh, if it's a standalone type of smoke alarm, it's just battery powered, then we can't put that up. If it's something that's hardwired mm -hmm. into your home, then you'll have to have a certified electrician do that oh, for okay. you. Oh, okay. So if I bought one of these dual 10 year alarms you guys could help me put it up? Absolutely. You Thanks. can just give us a call and let us know. We can come by and uh, help you get that put up and that way you're safe. That's awesome. I really appreciate you guys doing that. That's really great. Okay, so you guys are finishing up your Citizens Academy, aren't you? I did that a few years ago. Yeah, this week actually winds it up and we're excited. Uh, just pa this past week we did our live burn and we had a lot of people uh, from the Citizens Fire Academy really say that, wow, they, they were really impressed with yes. the speed of fire. And what they also noticed was that we did put a smoke alarm inside that burn room. Mm. And after about 30 seconds from the time there was a visible small flame, mm -hmm. the smoke alarm went off. Mm -hmm. And so they were really impressed that, hey, those smoke alarms really do work. And all of them were like, you know, I need to go home and check mine. And one of them said, you know, I disabled mine the other day. See, like uh, I just did. Just like you did, you know. And so they were going to go home that night and make sure everything was working. You know, I have to tell you, when I did the Citizens Fire Academy, that was the most impressive thing when we got to see the live burn. And what that is, is when you guys show us how fast a fire spreads. You have a little house room set up and you start a tiny little burn and though how fast it spread through that whole room was amazing. Like three minutes and everything was engulfed. Yeah, and the temperatures hit right around 1,000 degrees in just a couple of minutes or so, and that can happen in a home. So it's really important that you do know the sounds of fire mm -hmm. safety, you know what that smoke alarm sounds like, you know what the carbon monoxide alarm sounds like, and your family has a home escape plan that mm -hmm. includes a meeting place outside. That's true. Now tell me again about the differences in the chirps. The chirp, chirp, chirp that drives everybody crazy is you need a new battery. Yeah, normally you'll hear that every 30 seconds or every 60 seconds. Right. And it'll just chirp once. If it's a solid beep, 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 then more than likely you are, it is, and it is doing its alarm. And so you need to make sure that uh, if you have smoke in the house or something like that, or if it's carbon monoxide, you give us a call, that way we can come and check it out, either uh, put a fire out, hopefully it's not a fire, but we can put a fire out, or we can check the air quality inside the home and look for carbon monoxide and other gases. Now you have a lot of tours set up this month. This is the month where people can sign up their schools, their classes, their play groups, whatever it is, to come and see a fire station and learn more, right? Absolutely. We actually have uh, a couple of homeschool groups coming in. One is on October 8th, one is on October 20th. One of those is at uh, Station 1, the other is going to be at Station 2. We have multiple uh, public school groups coming in. I'm actually going uh, to the schools here in Kingsport and around Kingsport to do some fire safety presentations. Uh, we have story time at the library. That's going to be October 5th, and that's a preschool story time at 10.30 a.m. It's going to be just outside there in the park beside the library. So we're going to read some books, and we'll look at a fire engine, and Sparky the Fire Dog is going to be there. And it's, it's pretty neat. And we even have uh, moms groups that come in, different play groups, and they will all uh, call or email and they can set up a time where they can come and uh, bring their group to the fire station. I love that. That's fantastic. What other pearls of wisdom can you share with us regarding fire prevention week and month? Well, it, of course, it always is about safety. Mm -hmm. You know, we try our best here in the city of Kingsport to keep our citizens safe from fire and other emergencies. And it's really great when you can go out and talk to not only children, but talk to adults too, and help them learn about fire safety, help them learn about uh, proper use of smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors, and make sure that everyone has working alarms, plus they know what to do when it actually does happen. Very good. I love all that. So how we can get a hold of you again is call 
224-2820. And you have an email as well, right? I sure do. And that's Bricky, B-R-I-C-K-E-Y, at kingsporttn.gov. And they can email me there or they can call that number, 423-224-2820. And they can set up a time to come in to the fire station to take a tour. Or if it's someone who needs maybe their smoke alarms checked here inside the city, uh, you can get that scheduled at that same number. Very good, I love that. And next month, we're gonna have you back and we are going to talk about holidays. And that's an important time to talk about all that stuff because we're talking about frying turkeys and Christmas lights and all that stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of, lot of cooking going on in the month of November. Matter of fact, Thanksgiving Day is the number one day for home fires in the United States. And we're gonna try to see what we can do to keep that from happening here inside Kingsport. So that'll be an exciting thing to help too. Okay, very good. So what is your website? One more time for people to look up more information about. Well, they can go to kingsporttn.gov to look at some information from the Kingsport Fire Department. They can go to fpw.org. That is firepreventionweek.org. And so they can go there, fpw.org, and find out all kinds of things. Or they can go to sparky.org. Oh. If they have kids, there's lots of games there and lots of information for fire safety that is aimed at children. I love it. Barry, you're always a font of information and I appreciate it. Keeping our town safe. Thank you for being here today and we'll see you in a few weeks to talk to you more about the holiday safety. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us today. This is A Closer Look.